Uh, greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and of course we are glad to be able to bring you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share with you. So if you we're going to I'm going to read a scripture here real quick in the 28th chapter of the book of uh, Proverbs. It says in the 20th verse it says a faithful man shall abound with blessings but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Uh, we started off talking a few days ago about Solomon and God had allowed him to make a request to him in a dream and in that dream uh, Solomon basically asked for understanding and for wisdom uh, so that he'll know how to judge God's people correctly and so God told him God was pleased with that request and told him because you didn't ask for riches I'm going to bless you with riches I'm going to give you peace and uh, if you'll live according to my statutes I'm also going to bless you with long life and so the first thing God addressed was riches that he did not ask for riches you see that and in the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew, it tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And so here, it tells us in the 28th chapter of the book of Proverbs, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. That's a faithful man. Now that's what we want you to see there. Someone that is faithful. In other words, persistent. God is not against people being rich. Now, we have to say that up front so that you'll get an understanding of where we're coming from. God is not against people being rich. He's not against people planning or anything like that. But there are some that hasted to be rich. Let's jump down. Um, verse 22, it says, He that hasted to be rich hath an evil eye. Now that's talking about your lottery as well. That's folks hasting to be rich. You see that? He that hasted to be rich hath an evil eye and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. That's why so many people, when they win the lottery, if you don't have the capacity to make the kind of money that you can win in the lottery on your own, you won't have the capacity to keep it. That's why so many people that win the lottery end up not having it a few years later end up back in the same place they were before they won the lottery because they don't have the capacity they don't have the faithfulness to to be rich to begin with you see God prepares people for that you see God prepares people and the bottom line is this if you are faithful in God and if you are truly trusting in God you're not concerned with having a lot of money. That's not your concern. Your concern is doing the work of the kingdom. And then you allow God to bless you with what, what, what uh, he want to bless you with. You, you have to know that everybody is not meant to be rich. It's not meant for everybody to be rich. And you have to know that if you are faithful to God first and foremost, that whatever God has allotted to you will be yours. And many people, even churches, having money and financial seminars, and as far as I'm concerned, it's just a way for them to get around the blessings of God. In other words, the blessings of God, God blesses you through your faithfulness to him. And so a lot of times people have these little seminars and you know, and even in the name of God, uh, for the purpose of teaching people how to obtain money outside of God. Whereas you have to know, if you just do what God have called you to do, and many people can't even answer their call to the Lord. Many people don't even go into full-time ministry because they're afraid of not having money, or they're afraid of, of losing what, it, what, you know, they're afraid of losing uh, out some kind of way that some kind of way God is not going to provide and you know that that's a lesson that we learned with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt that God gave them manna from heaven on a daily basis and that first day a few of them gathered more than what they were supposed to gather because they didn't trust God 
And because of that, the next morning when they woke up, there were worms and things like that in it, what, it, what they had stored up, you see. And so then the, the food from heaven that God was providing was manna. But what had began to happen was the people began to, to crave what it was that they had back in Egypt. They wanted more than enough. They wanted abundance, more than an abundance of what was needful. And so they began to ask for meat. And they asked for it in unbelief. And so what happened was God gave them what they wanted, but, but, but while the flesh was in their teeth, he began to slay them. He began to kill them. And many times that's what people are. Now we can see that with food, but we can't see that with material possessions and money. That we want more than what God has allotted for us in this earth, and it grieves God. You see that? That kind of thing, it grieves God. And so, and God wants us to understand that, that he intends for us to follow him, and he'll allot to us, and he'll give to us the things. He'll give us our desires. He have no problem with that. But first, we have to make sure that we're delighting in him. You see that? That's the first thing. So let's go to the sixth chapter of the book of 1 Timothy. And... Uh, We'll start reading at verse 3. It says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, ev evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. So that, now that right there lets you know the mind state of people. Now, I've had plenty of folks come to me with questions, and uh, I can tell whether or not your heart is pure when you ask the question. And if your heart is not pure, I just won't go down that road. Because if your heart is pure, you'll receive the truth, and you'll know it's the truth when you hear it. But most of the time when people are asking questions, it's not from a pure heart. They're really just wanting to debate and get their point across. Now with that person, I don't waste my time. If you already got your mind made up, you can just go on about your business. You see that? And so that's what this is talking about. Folks that are proud and don't know nothing and they're destitute of the truth. Well, they got a whole lot of information, but, but it, there's no truth to it. And look at what it says. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. How? Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. And that's where people are, even in church. Now, this is talking about church folks. These people assume that the more you have is because God has blessed you with it. The more you have, the more righteous you are. And so some folks can't even stand to be around preachers that, that are content where they are, that don't have to have all of this world's goods. They want folks that, that they can lift up and put on a pedestal. And I'm just not one of those people. I'm just plain, simple. I really don't care about uh, the things of this world. I just want to see people get saved. You see that? And whatever God has for me, I know that I'll have it, but I'm not going to him on a daily basis begging him for it. I just, uh, I just understand this, that if I keep serving the Lord and doing what he's called me to do, then whatever is mine will come to me. And I don't have to go fishing for it. And I don't have to beg him for it. I don't have to go through scriptures and quote scriptures, you know, ten times a day on blessings and all of that. I just do what God called me to do. Everything else will come. You see that? And so this tells us to withdraw ourselves from people who think that gain is godliness. In other words, some kind of way, the more you have equals the more faith you have, which equals a better relationship with God. In other words, because I'm, I'm quote unquote blessed, that means that I have an abundance of faith. And somebody who's poor does not have an abundance of faith. You need to pray and ask God for more faith. Why? Because most of the time, whether you know it or not, People assume that they can use faith 
to obtain material possessions. That's what's being taught in a lot of pulpits today. That your faith is, is just for you to obtain possessions. If you had faith, you could have the nice car. You could have the big house. That God didn't give you faith for that. Faith, first and foremost, is to maintain your relationship with God. It's for you to believe God. And if you really believe God, you won't be as concerned with material possessions as you are. If you really believe and trust God, you'll be maintaining your relationship with God. You'll do what God has called you to do. And you'll, adjust, you'll just allow God to bless you how he chooses to bless you. You see that? And in other words, you look at what that scripture says in the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It didn't say seek material things. It didn't say seek material possessions, money, fame, prestige. It says seek ye first the kingdom of God. In other words, how does God's kingdom work? By doing what God has called you to do and allowing God to take care of the rest. Finding out what it is that God wants you to do in, in his kingdom and allowing him to take care of the rest. It's really just that simple. God makes provision for those who are in his vision. Now that's what you have to know. God makes provision. When God called the children of Israel out of Egypt when he rescued them it was his job to feed them and to clothe them and to make sure that they had what they needed the problem that he had with them for 40 years was their unbelief in the fact that if I rescued you if I delivered you I can sustain you and many of us today as believers we have that same problem whether we know it or not we can believe and trust God for the deliverance. Thank God you delivered me from the world and, and, and by grace have given me salvation. We can believe that. But you know, Lord, some kind of way you left me after the deliverance. So I don't trust you. So I'm going to have to make my own way. And I'm going to have to come up with all these formulas to make sure that you do what you're supposed to do. No, that same God that delivered you can sustain you throughout your life if you'll trust him. Amen. We thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something was said that have uh, blessed you and that have will help you to grow. We also pray that you will continue to share these messages with uh, others uh, as the Lord leads you. And uh, we look forward to bringing you more of God's uh, daily word devotion. Have a blessed day.